the national space policy, UK's national space policy. Now, this has been years in the, in the making, as it were, but it was funny, just before we came on air, Terry was showing me a book uh, by Sir Patrick Moore, who was a, a good friend to both of us um, before his son passing about 10 years ago. And uh, many people may or may not know that the UK did have quite an active space programme in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And the UK has been heavily involved in space pretty much since the dawn of the space age with various operations with satellites and, and development of satellites and instrumentation. Some of the key telescopes, we've talked about the James Webb many times on this show. Um, key instrument on that, the MIRI um, uh, instrument for imaging, uh, is a UK-based instrument, and that's shipping into the James Webb. And a lot of what's happened on the Rosetta spacecraft, for example, the European Space Agency and Mars Express, <coughs> Venus Express, Bepi Colombo, one of the principal instruments on that, um, right now is being run out of the University of Leicester, some good friends, again, involved in that. Um, so the UK's had a massive involvement in space pretty much since the get-go. But in the late 1960s, early 1970s, they kind of extended this into a potential launch program. And the UK is probably the only country on Earth, I can't think of any other, Terry, correct me if I'm wrong here, that's literally launched one rocket and then given up on its entire space program. Uh, that was the launching of the Prospero satellite using the Black Arrow rocket from Woomera in Australia. Um, and literally the, the Harold Wilson government at the time pretty much scrapped the whole thing as soon as that had happened. I mean, they, they literally wanted to scrap it before it happened, but um, it, it literally got kind of appended, as it were. And then people say, well, the UK really doesn't have a space agency or a space program. They do. They've had a massive involvement, not only in the European Space Agency, space agency for many, many years, but uh, like I said, a huge involvement with lots and lots of missions, NASA missions, ESA missions, JAXA missions, um, all over the decades, and lots of collaboration. Obviously, we had Tim Peake, um, very famously quite uh, in the last few years going up to the International Space Station as the first British European Space Agency astronaut and the first one to do an EVA as well, uh, which is interesting. But we're going to talk about some, Terry's going to mention somebody else who, again, it's a name that people may have forgotten. Um, but the first Britain space was a woman. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. But the whole national space policy, this is something that was launched last week. So the national space strategy, this is the government's long term vision for how this small island, the UK, can establish itself as one of the most attractive and innovative space economies in the world. Now, there's some key advantages in the UK's position in that we're an island and essentially we've got nothing um, pretty much to the west of us bar the Atlantic and, and Ireland, obviously, Terry. Um, but Thank north you. of us, yeah, <laughs> north of us, uh, we've got the Faroe Islands, we've got Iceland, etc. So from a launch and range trajectory perspective, as opposed to, say, a lot of the Central European countries. There's Portugal, you know, have got quite a good, you know, possibility there in terms of trajectory. Some of the islands in the Atlantic, like the Azores, etc. Again, they've got good possibilities. But the UK is really pushing towards this launch perspective uh, for the space flight program update. Now, there's some key elements to this. Part of this is also being driven by what's happened with Brexit and the UK obviously coming out of the European Union. We removed ourselves from one of the key projects that we were very, very heavily involved in, which is the Galileo Satellite Programme. Uh, the UK now, in terms of its defence, as a key NATO partner and a key partner in particular to the United States. We're looking at how we can defend ourselves because more and more it's becoming more and more obvious now, especially with the setting up of Space Command in the UK and the Space Force in the United States, that the future of warfare... Um, and it's a horrible thing to even think about, but the future of warfare is going to rely so much on space and space assets. And it won't be probably lasers in space. It won't be the kind of, um, you know, James Bond scenario uh, from Moonraker or anything like that. But it will involve satellites, satellites observing ground you know, assets on the ground to trying to determine what they're doing. We've had this literally since the, the invention of the satellite, this ability to either spy on other company, other countries and nations, or to be able to do things like launch detection. If you watch uh, movies going back to the early 80s, like War Games, for example, which is one of the key films that got most of us into computers and hacking and, and various other things like that. It was predicated on this whole you know computers analyzing satellite data and looking at launch trajectories and that's really really important and the growth of cyber attacks you know we've had in the last day and it was 
potentially just an accident inside the Facebook infrastructure, but Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp going down completely, taking out literally billions of users' uh, ability to communicate and, and do business in many cases. And whilst that's probably not a cyber attack, there have been some huge scale cyber attacks. And with what's happening with Starlink and potentially what's happening with Amazon and various other nations, Chinese and the Russians, moving towards satellite-based infrastructure and satellite-based communications and satellite-based internet, it's going to be more and more important to make sure that these assets up in space are, are really well protected, you know, uh, shored up, defined, um, et cetera, against all of these attacks and, and very much more resilient. So this is part of the whole national space strategy is, you know, you've got the launch aspect where we've got uh, multiple bases up in Scotland. So we've got things like Saxaford up in Shetland, which is one of the uh, key potential launch sites now. Big investment there from uh, the US behemoth, as it were, in the defense industry, Lockheed Martin. Um, you've got the Sutherland Spaceport. You've got Flambeda and Wales, what's happening there, obviously in Cornwall. You've got Presswick up in Scotland as well. And there's some funny, interesting little issues associated with that as well, in that the UK has come out of the European Union, but Scotland is now looking to break away from the United Kingdom, uh, potentially with what Nicola Sturgeon is planning, the first minister in Scotland, and saying that they're going to have a second referendum, etc. So it'd be interesting to follow that, what's happening. But at the moment, it's really focused around the growth in the UK space sector. And it is a huge, huge growth area. They're estimating the, the global space economy is worth hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. And the UK is aiming to get, you know, a, a, smooth, a small percentage of that, but a significant percentage. And it's all part of what the government are planning with upskilling and the integration with artificial intelligence and cybersecurity, all of that. So there's a lot of good in this. There's been some kind of overhyped communication from the government, galactic Britain and all sorts of nonsense like that, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But it's it's an interesting idea. And you only have to look at the number of jobs in the space sector. And people say, well, I don't work in space. Well, you may do. You may rely on space. You know, people rely on space for communications and rely on it for their GPS in their cars. There's so many areas that you think you may not rely on space, but you actually do. Um, so if you're interested, um, and some of the team that help us uh, produce this show at Space Store, you know, they're very heavily involved in computer science and programming. And that's a key element now in the, the whole of the space sector, being able to program satellites, ground systems, uh, being able to program and test those those kind of uh, systems as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a key thing. So even if you think, well, oh, space may not be part of my future, you may be wrong. 